you've had a really good week. Especially this week because you've been back at school for the first time in a really long time, haven't you? And I hope it's been really lovely seeing your teachers and all your friends again. Now, this week we're learning about a man who changed his job. It's a story from the Bible and this man changed his job. I'm going to start off by showing you some pictures of people who do jobs and see if you can guess what they do. What do you think this lady does? She's a policewoman, you're right, they look after people. Oh, this might be a bit tricky. This man, I'm going to give you a clue. He's got fish in his basket and he works on a ship. He's a fisherman. Well done if he said that. You'll know who this person is. This person here. She's a teacher, that's right. How about this person? Very important at the moment. She's a nurse. Last one, one of my favourites. This man, he's got some bread and he is a baker. Well done. So, those are jobs we have nowadays. There's lots and lots and lots of different jobs out there. And sometimes people change jobs, and that's what we're going to hear about today in the Bible. So, who of you can remember the name of the man that we've been learning about? He was a prophet, and his name began with an E. He said, Elijah, well done. Now, Elijah knew that his time was coming to an end. His work was coming to an end. And God had said to him, I need you to find someone to take over your job. I need you to go and look for a man called Elisha. Wow. They sound quite the same, don't they? Elijah and Elisha. And sometimes I get very mixed up with them, but I'll tell you a trick to remember which one came first. My sister told me this. She said, so Elijah comes first and he's got a J in his name, or a J, and that comes before an S in the alphabet. So Elijah came first. And then Elisha came second. Isn't that clever? It's very clever, my sister. So, Elijah knew that his work was nearly finished, and God told him, somebody needs to take over from you. And there's a man called Elisha, and I want you to go and find him, and he's to take over from you. Elijah set off, and he found Elisha. Now, Elisha was working in a field when Elijah, when Elijah found him. This is Elisha, and he was ploughing with his oxen. We don't see many people ploughing with oxen nowadays, but people used to, and in some countries they still do. And when you plough, if you can see the field, lots of different rows, those are called furrows, and they make sort of um, furrows in the soil, and then they put little seeds in, and that's the crop for next year. So he was ploughing. And Elijah came up to him, and in his hand he's got his cloak, and he put his cloak around him. Now, a cloak, a little bit like this like something you put around your shoulders. Sort of like a coat that they would have had in the old days, in the Bible days. But they didn't have zips and, and, and buttons and things like that. So clothes would have been used if you were travelling around, especially like the prophets did. It would have been used to keep you warm. It would have been used for protection against the weather. Um, it would have been used to, if you were sleeping outside, for you to lie on or maybe put it over you if you got cold at night time. Now it doesn't say what this cloak was made out of, but very possibly it was made out of um, animal skin, so maybe um, a deer or a sheep or something like that. So it would have been not like my one, which is sort of made out of nice, out of nice soft wool. His would have been made out of something much, much harder, because um, and something that lasted him lots longer because he was uh, walking around and he was travelling with it. Now, why did he give Elisha his cloak? He took it off and he gave it to Elisha for him on his shoulders. Now, I'll tell you why. Elijah was a really well-known prophet. And one of the things people recognised about him was that he used to wear this cloak. So when they saw Elijah and they saw his cloak, they put the two together. So when given Elisha his cloak, he was kind of saying to him, you're going to take over my job. People used to recognise the cloak and go, oh, here comes Elijah the prophet. And he was giving it to Elisha now because Elisha was going to take over the job. Now, Elisha came from a very rich family. They had lots and lots of cows and lots of land and lots of money and lots of houses. And Elijah said to him, God wants you to come and be a prophet. Now, if you were a prophet in those days, you had no money. You didn't necessarily have somewhere to live. You went around from city to city. People would look after you, but you didn't have anything of your own, really. So, Elijah was basically saying to Elijah, you need to give up everything you have and come with me and you're going to become a prophet. What do you think Elisha would say? Do you think he'd say, I'm not leaving my house and all my money? Or do you think he'd say, yes, I'll come with you? He said, 
I will come with you. It's not amazing. Think about his family and off he went. The two men travelled together and they went to a place called Jericho. Now, to get there, you have to cross a river. Um, a very big river called the Jordan River. Not, it's not like a little river you sometimes paddle in when you're on holiday. This was a massive river. You couldn't get across it um, just on your own. You would need, um, and, and there were no boats and there were no bridges and they couldn't get across them. Now, travelling with them were some other prophets that Elijah had taught and they knew that Elijah's time was coming to an end and they wanted to spend as much time as possible with them and they had come with them to the Jordan River. And also the family doesn't know this river thinking, how are we going to get across? It's much too big. We can't swim across. We're not that good at swimming. What are we going to do? And Eli then God told Elijah what to do. He took the cloak, he wrapped it, he sort of twisted it around, and he hit the water. And everybody was thinking, what's Elijah doing? Do you know what happened? The water parted. Okay, hit you here. It's Elisha and Elijah and the other prophets watching him. And Elijah hit the water and the water parted. A little bit like the Israelites when they were running away from the Egyptians. There wasn't that much water, but this was enough water that they couldn't get across. So the water parted and Elijah and Elisha walked through. They didn't get wet, they didn't get hurt, and they walked through the other side. And all the other prophets stayed because Elijah wanted to talk to Elisha privately. They went across and then they got to the other side. Elijah said to Elisha, my time is coming to an end. I'm not going to be here for much longer. God is taking me home to heaven. And he said, he said, what can I leave you? Or what would you like God to give you to help you while you're here? Being proper. Elisha said, I would like God to give me all the power that you've had. So I can do the job as well as you've done it. Which is a really good thing to ask for because he knew that Elijah had been a really good prophet. And he knew that if he wanted to be a good prophet as well, he needed God's help. Fantastic. So while they were talking, suddenly God sent a chariot that came down in between them. Now this is a chariot. This bit here. It's a bit like a car from the olden days. But you had to have horses drawing the chariot. And that's how people got around. Not everybody. People with money that had chariots. Like a, but that's a chariot. But this chariot that God sent didn't look like this. Oh no, this chariot was on fire. But it wasn't a bad fire. Nobody was getting burnt. So it was bright and um, the chariot was on fire and the horse was on fire and it was beautiful. And they were just amazed. And, uh, and the chariot came to them and then God sent a whirlwind, which is like a lot of wind that goes round and round and round and round and round. And God took the chariot and he took Elijah, put him in the chariot, and Elijah and the chariot went up into heaven in the whirlwind. How amazing is that? And he has a picture. And as Elijah went up, he, he left the cloak for Elisha. And up he went into heaven. Oh, fire is beautiful. Well, I wonder if Elisha felt a little bit sad because his friend was gone now. And he was thinking, come on, my own, what do I do? But then he remembered God had a job for him. He was going to be God's prophet, and he was going to tell people about God. So they picked up the cloak, <clears throat> and he went back to the Jordan River. But when he got there, the water had closed again. He thought, what am I going to do? I can't swim. I haven't got a boat. There was in a bridge. And the other prophets were still looking over the water. And they were waiting for him and Elijah. And they must have thought, Elijah's gone, but it's just Elisha. What's he going to do? And Elijah, Elisha remembered mixed up with those two names, Elisha remembered that God had given Elijah power to pass the water. So he took the cloak, wrapped it up, and he hit the water again, and the water opened up. And Elisha could walk through to the other side of the prophet. Now, what you have to remember is that cloak wasn't magic. There was nothing special about that cloak. It was just like my one. Just like yeah. It was just something used to keep him warm and to protect him at night time. Nothing magic about it. The power Part the water, part the water came from God, and the prophets on the other side would have known that as well. But seeing Elisha with Elijah's cloak and hidden water like Elisha, like Elijah did, the prophets knew that Elisha now had the power, and he was God's special prophet. And that's amazing, isn't it? God had given Elisha the same power that Elijah had. So, 
Do you know what? Elisha loved God. And even when he was working in his field with his oxen, he loved God and he worked hard for him. Because he loved God, God gave him a special job. He was to be a prophet. But even when he was with his cows, that was still a special job because he loved God. Now, if you love God, God will give you special jobs to do. I've got a special job. It's teaching you guys explorers, and I love it. It is one of my favorite things to do. You guys are little, so you'll do different kinds of things. Maybe it'll be things like helping your mom and dad tidy up the house, loading the dishwasher, or tidying away your toys, putting your shoes by the front door. Those are special jobs that God gives us. They will become different when you get older, and God will have other special jobs for us. So, that was about Elisha, taken over from Elijah. They have two names, Elijah. And God gave Elisha the same power that Elijah had in Elisha. So from now on, we're going to be learning about Elisha. Um, and yes, so that's what we're going to be learning about in the next couple of weeks. So what I want to do now is pray before we carry on with everything else. Just bow your head. Dear God, thank you that you gave Elisha your power to tell people about you. Thank you that you always look after us just like you looked after Elijah. Amen. Amen. Time to learn our memory verse. And our memory verse for this week is, We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua 24, 18b. 18b means the second bit of the verse. So, it says, We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua 24, 18b. I'm going to teach you some signs to go with that. And hopefully we can remember. So, I'm going to do just a couple. One of them is we. That means all of us. So we too will serve, like you're sewing, like you're working. So we too will serve the Lord. And the word because, you go because, because, says we too will serve the Lord because he is our God. That's your 2418b. So let's do it again. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Well done. Right, now for our crafts and our activity sheets. Now, the activity sheets are going to look a little bit different this week because we are using an old book from 2013 to do the stories at the moment and we can't find that activity sheet. No idea where it's gone, but it's fine. The internet's fantastic for this kind of thing. So in your packs, you'll have um, a dot to dot. I'm not sure if you can see these very well. Uh, you'll have a colouring in sheet and you'll have a word search. Now, those are for the older ones. Uh, and then for for Levi and Lila, um, I've got a picture of Elijah going up in the um, chariot, but I've cut them up. So you've got a bit of a puzzle, so that will be quite fun. So those will be in your activity packs. And Levi and Lila, uh, Lila you've got um, a colouring in sheet as well. Now, for our craft today, we are going to be making uh, the whirlwind that took um, Elijah up to heaven to be with God. Um, and the chariot of fire. So in your packs, you will have a little bit of paper like this. All right. You need to get your grown up to help you cut that out, or I'm sure your older ones can do it yourself. If you cut it out, and you need to color it in. So I've colored mine in. It's a bit flamey, and I'm sure you're going to do a much better job than I have. Okay. And that's going to be part of it. The other things that I'll give you as well is a bottle of water. That you can see into. You, you need to have your own glue at home. I'm sure you've got some. Uh, two pipe cleaners, some glitter, sorry parents, and some sort of glittery bits. So what we're going to do to start off is you need to open up the bottle of water and drink a little bit. Or you, some, or you can water some plants, it's fine, but we just we don't want the whole bottle full. Now I'm working on a tray like this, just in case I spill some water. And what we're going to do is, with the bottle of water, we're going to take the, um, the sort of glittery bits, the bigger bits, and put them in. Okay, we're going to put them all in the bottle, as many in as you can. Now, if you look carefully, some of these are uh, Christmas trees and all sorts of things, but it doesn't matter. As long as they're shiny and they do the job, that will be fine. Okay, just keep filling them up. You can put as many in as you want to, or as, as few as you want to. And then I'm going to just put the lid on, and I'll show you what I've done. I've got some on the top, and then when I shake them, <gasps> ooh, look at that. And then also, so we've got that. 
I'm also going to put the small bits of glitter in. Another reason I'm working on a tray so it doesn't go all over the place. I'm going to take some glitter and just pour it in the top. And I'm going to put it all in there. Why not? You can use as much as you want to. We don't need these bits back for church. So I've got the glitter there on the top. I'm going to shake it. <gasps> wow. And it's going round and round and round like a whirlwind. Like the whirlwind that took Elijah up to heaven. Okay, so we've got that ready. So hopefully you'll have coloured in your colouring bits by now. Sorry, my camera's not very good. Did you look at who through there? What we're going to do now is we need to um, fold it over and stick it together. But before we do that, one of these pipe cleaners needs to be stuck in like that. Okay? You see? All the way up, it needs to be stuck in. So I'm going to put some glue on mine all over the place. You need to remember very especially to put the glue on the bit in between. Okay, so I put glue all over that. And then I'm going to stick it like that. You'll be doing yours on the table, obviously. And then mine's all stuck together. There you go. Now, so it's on there. The other thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this roll around. So, um, I'm going to do it around my finger. Okay, twist it around my finger. You might want to ask one of your parents to do it so you can have longer bits. Now, I think I'm going to leave mine like that and just and just um, sellotape it on. You can use two if you want to and make it much longer, but I think I think I'm just going to do the one with mine. So there we have. I'll sort of take it to the lid so it sort of stands upright. Oh, I'm very excited about this. There we have Elijah going up to heaven in the in the chariot on the wall. Shake, shake, shake. Look at that. Oh, I just pulled it back. How cool is that? Make sure. The lid is on really, really tightly. You might want to get your parents to help you sellotape it around. But I really like that. Look at that, the whirlwind. Fantastic. Oh, I like that. I'm going to put that on my bedside cabinet and I can look at it through the light with the light shining from the back. Well done. Hello, explorers. Today's song is Who's the King of the Jungle? Who's the King of the Jungle? Ooh, ooh. 